How did you know how to make that? Well, shit, that's actually a really good question. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I'm talking into the desk mic. That means that it is time for another talking head video. Won't you please join me as I talk about the manner in which I research how to make shit. So researching for cosplay is, in my experience, very different than researching an actual historical outfit. When you're researching a historical outfit, you've got to make sure that like all of your photos, all of your paintings, if you go far back enough, all of your brasses and effigies are actually accurate and like from the time period that you're trying to recreate. Whereas because I cosplay from a video game, all I need to do is boot the video game up. Thanks. Don't mind if I do. So our primary documentation is a lot easier to access and through the wonders of modding, it's even easier again. Now I've grumbled mightily about all of the effort that I spent recreating Geralt's gloves from this outfit. So let's focus on that, shall we? Okay, so the great thing about The Witcher 3 is that the developers, CD Projekt Red, put a mammoth amount of effort into the graphics and the designs of all of the outfits. So much so that as you can see, we can see all of the individual seams and lines on all of the outfits. So if like me, you have a brain one that makes you want to be as accurate as possible, this should be enough detail to show you the entire construction, right? R right? Right? So here's the point at which we take all of our notes and screenshots and jump out of the game and look at some real clothes. Unfortunately, real clothes that go onto our real bodies must suffer the constraints of existing in the real world and not being made of pixels. And so they've got to be constructed from real materials. So let's have a look at some images of real gloves and have a look at some real gloves if you've got some laying around. I was an electrician in another life. We very quickly come to a point where we realize that in order to fit around a human's weird assortment of knuckle filled tentacles, gloves must have a very specific construction in the real world. Specifically that in order to get their 3D shape, they must employ the use of geometry such as fourchettes or be made from a stretch material. But wait a minute, leather isn't a stretch material and the gloves in the games don't have fourchettes in them. This is the point at which you must sit down and ask yourself how exactingly close you have to get to what's shown on the screen in order to appease the brain worms. Yeah, frustratingly close. But let's not throw any babies out with bathwater just yet. Let's have a look at how these real garments are constructed to give us some options. The great and terrible thing about cosplay as opposed to historical costuming, as I said, is that appearance is everything. If you made a pair of medieval hose that don't look exactly like the painting, but you follow all of the construction methods and use materials that would have been available at the time, well, Shit, nothing looks like the paintings and the fact that you constructed it that way means that it's historical. I promised myself that I wouldn't use the phrase historically accurate, but we all know what I mean. So with a cosplay like this, I can use as many modern construction methods, shortcuts and outright cheats as I want, as long as the end product looks like what's shown in the video game. I mean, check it out. These gauntlets? They've got big foam pads on the inside of them. What, did you think that my arms were the same size as Geralt's arms in game? Shame on you. So because gloves without fourchettes don't really exist in the real world, until I start my own fashion line, place your orders now, that means that I can pick and choose whatever construction methods I like that I think will get me to the end point that I'm aiming for. In this case, I think that these gloves would be best assembled by stitching them together inside out and then reversing them, kind of like a turn shoe. The part where the cuff, the gauntlet, Gauntlet bit joins onto the rest of the glove. I've seen gloves in real life use something similar to an Arnold seam or a lapped seam, but in the game, these are shown with just a single line of stitching. So I'll put those together inside out and turn them as well. One method that I used to surprisingly fantastic effect was simply duct taping my meaty mitts and then drawing lines over the duct tape in a Sharpie where the seams should be. Uh, if you do use this method, remember to put down a layer of plastic underneath the duct tape like a disposable glove. Now, the great thing about this is that duct tape won't shrink or stretch, so you're guaranteed dimensions that are at least close to what the final dimensions of the worn object is going to be. This is true of gloves or even bigger full torso sized things. 
This isn't the end of it though. The patenting phase that I glossed over in the gloves video with a 10 second joke took me a ludicrous amount of time in real life and revisions. And it spent more than a month in the timeout bin for projects that are difficult or just annoy me. It's a very big bin. Uh, now, once you've got a 2D shape, of the 3D thing from the game that you're trying to replicate, honestly, you're like 90% of the way there. Now you just need to figure out the real nitty gritty of how those seams ought to be attached. I'll save you me repeating myself for the entirety of how I made the gloves and I'll just link the glove videos in an annotation and in the description here. I find researching fantasy genre cosplay like this really interesting because I can look into historical construction methods and historical garments without feeling like I'm bound or constricted by those things. Which is great. I can see that historical jerkins were often lined with fabric that was glued into place and I can copy that and get a whole lot of structure and all of the positives out of that, but not be obligated to make it in the shape or the style of a historical jerkin because at the end of the day, it isn't. All this to say that fantasy cosplay is very freeing for me. Yes, I choose for it to be very prescriptive in how each item ultimately looks, but how I get there is completely up to me to figure out, and that's exciting. It's like a puzzle where you know what the end product should look like. Gloves. And what all of the pieces are. Leather. And you just need to assemble it. At any rate. I hope that this little dive into my research technique was interesting for you, and I hope that I've encouraged some of you to give it a try for yourselves, because it's very rewarding. Thank you very much for watching. You guys take it easy, and I'll catch you next time. What? Did you think that my arms were the same size as Geralt's arms?